one of the most useful recipes I know of for fruit, any kind of fruit really, is fruit scrap vinegar. This is inspired by Sandor Katz. I adapted his basic recipe a long time ago and I made it work with basically any kind of fruit that's left over from making jam uh, or extracting uh, juice or something like that. I'm going to go through two different types here. First, I have some crab apples. So I took crab apples and I was making crab apple juice to make jelly. So there wasn't any sugar added to them. And I take the leftover mash of the fruit. I put it into a jar. I add water. We add sugar. And then in that jar right there is the vinegar leftover from last season that I made from wild plums. And then we just mix everything together put some cheesecloth on the top. That is very important because this needs to breathe. Otherwise, it will not make vinegar. Other than that, though, this is one of the most versatile recipes I know of. You can just plug and play any kind of fruit. Use a mix of fruit. Make your own blends. Then I'm going to put a little label on it. And that's it. Now I'm going to make some with wild plums. So there's some pulp left over from making wild plum puree. And I'm actually going to add some extra fruit, too, that were kind of past, uh, they were too ripe. And those are uncooked, so they're going to have a lot of yeast on them. It's going to give us some really vigorous fermentation. You can do all kinds of different things with this. Like I said, different fruits, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I usually make a couple different batches every year. Then we add our sugar, we add our water. And sorry for the strange crop on this. My uh, scale was blinking uncontrollably when I got it into the editing suite here. Okay, once again, I added a little bit of the previous year's vinegar there just to get things going as an inoculant. We put some cheesecloth on top, and then we let it sit and do its thing. Okay, so about after a week, you're going to start seeing something hopefully looking like this. And I've never had this not work. Okay, look, we can see all of the bubbles. That means our fermentation has started, and it's alive! Look at all those bubbles. I love to see that. You're also going to want to stir this, and I'm going to show you why here. Uh, make sure to stir it here and there. Okay, so about after a week or two, and it doesn't have to be an exact science, you're going to strain out the solids. And that's so if you forget about it, it won't mold, because if, they, if the solids float up, which they tend to do, they can get exposed to air. Um, you can just stir it too, but here I'm going to slow this down. I did this in the summer, and fruit flies, if you can see there, I think there was like 30 fruit flies that flew out. And I just wanted to add some realness here, because with vinegar, this is something you may have to deal with. Fruit flies, they don't seem to like my grape vinegar, but they really like the plum vinegar. And after this, it, I just, I should have stirred it and it would have negated that problem, but there was like 30 fruit flies around my house for a couple days after that. You can always do this outside, and it's also not the end of the world. It actually, the flies actually help make the vinegar and speed the process up, and the vinegar is sterile. If they go into it, they die, so it's, don't worry about that. Uh, it is a natural part of the process, but I'm going to strain the vinegar there after I strained it through cheesecloth, and then we're going to put more cheesecloth on top, and then we're going to let it sit. Okay, so you leave that in a cool, dry place. And in a couple weeks, you're going to have strong tasting vinegar with the same similar pH to what you buy in a store. And after a couple weeks, look what we have here. That is a mother. So I can just leave that in there or we could put it into, you know, a bottle of wine or something if we wanted to make more vinegar. Or you can throw it away. Some people eat it. I think that's kind of weird. But now we're going to put a lid on the jar because it doesn't need to breathe anymore. And then we can store it in the counter. Okay, now sweetening. This is really important to talk about because one of the best things you can do with this vinegar is use it to season salad greens. And I usually sweeten it. But if you sweeten it, you need to do a very important thing, which is warm it up a little bit. And you need to kill the ferment because otherwise... It's just gonna, the vinegar is going to keep eating the sugar and it's just going to ferment and it won't be sweet at all. And this is totally optional. You can use the vinegar just as all-purpose vinegar, but I like to save a little bit that's sweetened. 
uh, two seasoned salad greens and things like that. So we just mix the sugar and the vinegar and the recipe for this is all on my website. Mix the sugar and the vinegar together and then we just warm it up until the pan steams. I don't even worry about a specific temperature. If it comes to a simmer, that's totally fine because we're just trying to kill the ferment here. So all you gotta do is just stir it until the sugar dissolves and we can see it's starting to steam there. So this is good. The ferment will have died and that just stabilizes it. I'll put a little bit on my wrist. You know, it's warmer than body temperature. We're good to go. All I wanna do is see a little steam. So I'm gonna turn the, turn the heat off there and then I'm just gonna pour it into a mason jar and I will put a lid on and keep that in the fridge. And that's it, folks. How to make vinegar from basically any fruit that you can find. Full recipes on my website. Thanks for watching.